one in the head. Halfway. Um, the project the title is counter-electroacoustic uh, methods and aesthetic approaches be utilised to augment the way that uh, melody and harmony um, is composed so in two different contemporary electronic uh, music. It was about using soundscape and acousmatic approaches to compose melody and harmony. Um, it was also each piece was representing a specific environment. So all of the sounds that were used in each piece were taken from that environment um, in order to sort of create a sense of being within that environment when you're actually listening to the music. Um, the, there was two methods used for composing. Um, one of those was to create a new scale out of sounds within the environment. So you take maybe the sound of a digger engine or a washing machine or something and analyse that for the frequencies that are in it and find the most stable, strong frequencies in there and use those to create a new scale for melody and harmony. Um, the second method was to use um, sounds to create rhythmic motifs. So uh, this was taking sounds and rearranging them, um, mm -hmm. but also finding rhythms that are within the environment itself and extracting them as a whole uh, and, and using those and layering them up. So the literature review mostly showed me what I needed to do in order to incorporate soundscape and acousmatic approaches into my project. Um, there's a lot of theory based around um, using sounds for their intrinsic properties rather than from where they originated um, and also um, how you can use sounds to create music um, but also keep them intact enough that you know exactly where they come from and you can build up a picture of them being within an environment. So, I used a piece of software called Spear to analyse the audio um, because it allowed me to uh, analyse it for partials at every hertz between um, 20 and, and 20 kilohertz uh, and then delete ones below a threshold so you're left with only the strong ones. Um, I also used that software to synthesise these um, partials so that I could get an accurate representation of the exact sounds. Um, the arranging for the music itself was done in Cubase, um, where I could take those sounds that I'd analysed and I could chop them up, arrange them properly, um, and also apply effects and things to the synthesised sounds. Um, because the synthesis from Sphere only comes out in sine waves, so you need to add other things to make them sound a bit more interesting and musical. There wasn't any formal testing um, throughout the project, although. I did have to uh, make sure that I was using the approaches that, that I was incorporating in line with acousmatic and soundscape um, ideals. Um, so I had to work out whose ideas I was going to follow um, and then use those to make sure that I was actually sticking within the realms of soundscape and uh, acousmatic theory. Um, for example, um, when creating a new scale from environmental sound, I had to make sure that the pitch material that I was using was accurate enough um, because through several methods that I, I tried, um, the frequencies weren't uh, moving as they actually were in real time in the environment itself. Um, so they could be off by anywhere up to about 20 hertz at times. Um, so the thing that really helped with that was using Spear to resynthesize the sounds because it would take the exact sound and synthesize it exactly how it was originally. So there's five pieces of music. Uh, I made two with each of the methods that, that I've discussed and then throughout that process I found um, certain methods worked better than others um, and therefore I would take those particular methods forward to work on the final piece of music. I proved that it is possible to create melody and harmony that works within um, electronic dance music genres um, without having to necessarily follow uh, the classic Western intervallic scale system um, that you don't necessarily need to stick to um, all of those specific intervals that have been set out, you can make your own stuff up um, and it's not necessarily all about 
how do you uh, get the pictures of things or and the tundra is water. also very important to the, the outcome pro, of the, the actual sound itself. Mm. Going to the new forest to record sounds of rivers and birds and there was a horse that, that caught me off guard because I was wearing headphones and the microphone pointed towards the stream and the horse just sort of came up behind me and made me jump. That was, that was pretty funny. I learned a lot about field recording um, from going to different locations and recording with, uh, with much better gear than I had before um, and learning how to get the best sounds possible from that standing in the right place and, and so on. Um, I also learned a lot about arranging sounds which aren't necessarily thought of largely as, as musical. Um, for example, taking uh, a bird song um, and listening out for rhythms that they're singing and then working out how I can chop that out um, and put appropriate fades in to be able to create call and response between different uh, parts of bird song. I learned a lot about analysing audio um, in more accurate ways than before um, by extracting out thousands of different um, partials or at different frequencies and then working out how to take that information and build a new scale out of it um, by deleting certain things and, and moving certain things around.